right now in a couple of New York's very own shaking up the late night talk show scene. We're talking about the Bodega Boys, Desus and Mero. And this morning they're joining us to share their life lessons from growing up in the Bronx. So right now, good morning. Uh, I would say fellas, but right now we only have one of you. Mero, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Yes, of course, when your partner in crime joins you, we'll bring him on in. Um, right now we'll, we'll be happy to talk to you, okay? So uh, we, you and I, are on totally opposite schedules, right? You're doing a night show, I do a morning show. But we did yes. manage, thanks to you, to share some screen time a couple weeks ago. Let's roll the clip. Cross paths. Revel Mopeds suspended their service in NYC. We have no idea why. And after the deaths of two riders in just two weeks, Revel suspended its scooter service. All right. So I don't know if you heard, <laughs> but there's been some breaking news here that Revel is actually back in business. So do I get another cameo? What? Yeah, of course. Now we got to follow up. It's, now the story has legs, as they say in journalism. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, right? I mean, what did you, you think of that overall story of, of the Revels? That was, that was wild because... I, I saw something similar in San Francisco with the little green, I don't know what they're called, but I get Bolt or something, like the little scooters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, you know, the people line. just pick them up, drop them, go wherever. And I was just like, this doesn't seem sustainable in like a very large, dense <laughs> city like New York City. Yeah. So and, and to me, it was a matter of time. The Lime scooter, things that you're talking about. You know, uh, so you are coming to us from your basement because you guys didn't sk skip a beat in the wake of the COVID crisis, right? You've been doing your shows from home. So many people. I had one in my in my dining room. So how does it feel mm -hmm. to be doing your show virtually? How did you pick the location? Because I know you had some, you had to figure out where exactly to go from. Well, you know, they say motherhood is the, is the uh, uh, necessity, is the uh, motherhood of invention. So <laughs> since I have four children and my wife stays at home, I was relegated to my basement to do the show. So, I mean, I would love to have done it in my dining room, which is a much nicer, like, you know, this natural light and stuff. But, you know, I don't want kids cartwheeling through my shot. So, <laughs> like the guy, from the, the guy from the BBC. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> put bolts on the door and be like, stay out. Right, exactly. Like, you know, uh, by the way, we've been trying to get Dr. Fauci on our show for quite some time. You had him on yours. Can you put in a good word? Yeah. Oh! I'll, I'll fix that. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. These are snakes. Yo. You see, the devil tried to stop me. Live <laughs> television. Live Sorry. television. I love that good we have them both now. Good morning, Texting everybody. Texting. We were just, hey, good morning. By the way, your, uh, Mero was just putting in a good word with Dr. Fauci. He was just calling him up because we're trying to get him on the show. You had him on yours. Uh, along Dr. With Dr. Fauci, that's the homie. Yeah, and AOC yeah. was on your show. Um, so how do you guys figure out who you're going to have on and, and, and what to talk to them about? Well, I think it's, it's, uh, helps, uh, books, it helps book our guests. Uh, and it's just mm -hmm. more like, you know, the timeliness of things. Like when Fauci yeah. came yeah. on, you know, COVID was, was spiking ridiculously. And, you know, a lot of young people were like kind of blasé about the whole situation. So having him on, and speaking to a younger audience, to us, we felt was really important. Are the kids running around? Yeah, a lot right of times. I think I hear the kids running around upstairs. <laughs> um, oh, no. I was like, I was like we're, doing good, good, we're doing L.A. today. You got to go all the way upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, guys, you're dropping some wisdom on your fans in your new book. Uh, it's called God Level Knowledge Darts, Life Lessons from the Bronx. There it is. You're both having it. Perfect on cue. Go. So uh, let's start with, with um, Desus. Your, your biggest lesson you learned growing up in the Bronx. The biggest lesson I learned, uh, when you go to a supermarket, always pick up the chicken that's a little bit cheaper than the first chicken you picked up. That will take you far in life. You'll save a lot of money. So if you see chicken and it's like seven fifty one, get the chicken at $7.33. That money, you'll appreciate it when you're like 60. That's right. Savings add up. That's wisdom right there. What about you, Mara? Well, uh, for me, it was, uh, you know, uh, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, boring but it's it, it was this too shall pass like you know yeah. whatever's going on in your life you know things are going bad you know you're having a bad time a couple of bad days bad month bad year whatever it'll be it'll pass yeah it'll pass you know just have faith and you know center yourself and good things will happen hey you know you, I mean? and Think you're doing positive. a virtual book tour this year it's a little different yes that's right so just that's that's right. Right. We tonight got... pop it off tonight at right. 10 p.m and you never know what can happen in a virtual book tour. It's all, it's more intimate exactly. than a regular book tour because people can type stuff in the chat and directly interact with us. But the last yes. two ones we have have been great. The next we have 
One's on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tickets still available at bodegahive.com. Listen, it's yeah. a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Don't miss out. I'm just going to take enjoy. a quick bite right here of the Bodega Boys uh, yes. bacon, egg, and cheese ice cream. Yeah. Do it. Mm. Hey, yes. How's it taste? Okay. How's it taste? You know, guys, this is actually yeah, It works, right? This actually right? works. See? Wait, yeah? you see it? Yeah? How'd you come up with the flavors? Just what it, you it see in a bodega. a bodega. It's a bodega and ice cream. Guys, this is really good. To give everyone, we wanted to give everyone that's not blessed enough to live in New York a chance to be in a bodega. So with every bite, you are now in a bodega. If you want to after this for authenticity, you can buy a lotto ticket. You know what I'm saying? It's All right, good. I got to bring you guys. I got to bring you guys. I'm told we're out of time. We're, I got to bring you guys over to New Jersey. We can get a Taylor ham, egg, and cheese and then turn it into ice cream. Hey, Listen, we can get, Taylor we can get a Jersey Sloppy Joe. It's going to be great. Jersey Stop and Joe's, and we'll go to Rutz Hut Hot Dogs. We'll turn it all into ice cream. We'll chat, guys. This has been great. Let's come back go. on the show. You guys come back, all right? Because I, I, we have so much to talk about, and we're out of time, though. Thank you so much. Yeah, hey, th Look thank you. Look forward to your next time you're on Dudes of Merrill, number one show late night. Uh, on show Sundays. Third. By the way, you're on the big night now, on so. Sundays. Sundays, Sundays and Thursdays. Thursdays. No, Sundays and Thursdays. Hey, guys, pleasure like to talk to you. Uh, tickets are still... <laughs> Take it easy. They're still on the virtual book tour tomorrow night. We'll have all the information on our website, pix11.com. Uh, I was supposed to ask them about, what are they called? Chunky Ducks. Chunky Ducks. Sorry, I couldn't, but I it's apparently that is, a shoe. I can tell you, the Bodega Counter Crunch ice cream, this stuff is good. This bacon, egg, and cheese was very good.